Good morning, everybody. So today I'm going in to add some media to my cells and split them down probably, depending on how confluent they are. So confluency, it's like the percentage of cells that you've got on your plate. So how much they've covered the base. If they've completely covered it and you can't see a clear spot, they're 100% confluent. If you can only just see like one or two cells every now and then, they're like 1% confluent. So typically I think you want 70 to 90% confluency before you start splitting your plate. So we'll see what we've got this morning. All just depends. Alrighty, so yeah, that went about as easily as expected. I did stuff something up though. Uh, so basically we have an aspirator, which is like a pump that will take out all of the media and liquid from your T75, so from the little receptacle that your cells are in. And I was looking at it and I was like, that, that rubber tip end, that's pretty unclean and I'm about to put that into my cells. I guess I'll spray it down with ethanol, but this feels quite unclean. And then at the end, my supervisor said, okay, so grab the glass tip and chuck that in the glass bin. And I said, glass tip? What glass tip? So basically there is a glass pipe that is meant to be shoved into the end of the rubber tube. And that glass pipe is sterile, which is fine. Uh, and I had just shoved the rubber pipe straight in my cells. So I was splitting them today. So I am desperately hoping that I haven't contaminated them all and we don't have to do this whole process again. Um, but this is what I was trying to say this morning about cell culture being easy, but also going wrong very quickly and still being finicky, even though it's simple, still finicky. So anyway, we will find out on Wednesday if I have ruined everything. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Today I am on my way into the lab for another quick day. Um, I should just be diluting my guide RNAs for some gene editing I'm going to try doing tomorrow. And I just want to have everything ready to go for that. And maybe double checking on my cells to see if they're okay. That ended up being a lot more work than anticipated. Essentially, the plasmids that we'd been waiting on arrived yesterday afternoon. So I had time today to streak them out onto plates. So basically, when you get some of the genome editing tools that I'm working with at the moment, uh, they come in plasmid form. So essentially, these plasmids have my tools in them that I need to use for uh, genetic editing or genome surgery is what we're gonna call it these days. Editing implies that it's like going to Microsoft Word, Control X, control case uh, and that's not really true so i really like this push of calling it genome surgery in that we're trying to have an effect we're making pots quite literally but it's still possible for a surgeon to make a mistake it's still possible for a scientist to make a mistake so my genome surgery tools are inside these plasmids we get the plasmids in the bacteria so my job essentially just looks like growing up normal bacteria once those bacteria are grown we will make them explode extract all the plasmid out and then get my tools out of those plasmids um but that's a while down the track so well i expected that to take about 20 minutes um because of that delivery it took about two hours so basically i just had to streak them out onto some agar plates so they could grow a bit but yeah other than that that's been today tuesday has been surprisingly productive and i'm really looking forward to tomorrow good morning everybody it is so I'm starting my day off with two hours in the tissue culture hood. This time I'm going to use the glass tip on the aspirator. And then in the afternoon, I'm going to go the So the goal is to tell you a bit more about floating this morning, but um, I might have to rethink the format of these videos because it is too cold. Right. I have to say that about Love Scotland. Very cold, wet, and dark, especially from 7:30 a.m. It's 7:30. I should also point out that this is my earliest morning and my longest planned day yet in the lab. Like not ever, just in the last three months. So there's definitely something to be said for getting exhausted and making silly choices. For example, I have a disposable mask on because this morning, when filling up my water bottle, I dropped my reusable one in the sink. Anyway. See how today goes. Good afternoon, everybody. So today actually went fantastically. We got everything done that we wanted to. No as yet obvious mistakes. So it's still pretty cold at the moment, so I'd much rather get home and explain this properly. But basically in the morning, we got our transfections done in, I'm gonna say probably an hour when we scheduled two hours for it. So feeling good about that. There was new equipment that I had to work with and one mistake happened. I don't know if it's my fault or it was just something that happened, but no big deal. So this afternoon we started off our cloning. So 
overall cloning is going to take, I think it's going to be a three day process by the end. I think it might just be a bit too cold and windy for this today. Um, so in the afternoon I got my cloning work started. So what I had to do for that was uh, digest my plasmid with two different restriction enzymes, which has its own complications, and then add in the bit that I want and I put it on for a ligation reaction overnight. Yeah, I might have to explain this when I get home. It's just too cold to have my hands out to film. I'll see you at home. So it's just a bit too cold out there, but I want to quickly explain what I mean by cloning. So I think when I say cloning, a lot of people are going to think of like Dolly the sheep or cloning a human into a new human. And that's not really what it means in a molecular genetics lab. So when people are talking about cloning, what they're usually talking about is cloning a fragment of DNA, just a piece. So your cloning strategy typically has four stages. The first one is digestion. This usually involves a restriction enzyme coming into, in my case, some circular DNA and cutting open a break. In my case, the digestion was quite complicated because I had two different restriction enzymes. So for example, one that cuts here and one that cuts here. So the idea being that I can remove this whole chunk of my DNA and just have this bit left. So for me, that was my digestion step. Two different restriction enzymes that required two different salt concentrations, temperatures, times, but eventually I got this piece of DNA separated from this piece of DNA. So the second step is ligation. Ligation is where you either ligate one bit back into itself to make a full plasmid, so you've just put it back together but you've removed that piece, or you supply a new piece that you want to put in and then ligate that in together. So ligation is bringing back together. So my ligation is happening right now. It is going to be going for 16 hours overnight at a cool kind of temperature and then it's just going to drop down to 4 degrees so that when I go in tomorrow morning it will be there ready for me to pick up and move on with. So the third step is transfection. Transfection typically just means putting DNA into a cell, usually bacteria, and that is exactly what I will be doing tomorrow. And then the fourth step is kind of verification. How do you know that it works? So for example, maybe I put green fluorescent protein in, or GFP. So if I put GFP in, I'd be expecting my cells to look fluorescently green. Or you can just sequence it if your phenotype is not quite that obvious. Okay, so that is cloning very briefly. I will see you guys tomorrow morning. Good morning, everybody. It is another cold, windy day. I think it's about 2.30 right now. Um, my lab booking starts from 2, but I couldn't get into the tissue culture until 3. So today I've got my transfection from yesterday, so the ligation reaction that was running overnight. Um, I'm going to be transfecting that into some cells. I'm also going to be changing the media on the transfections I did yesterday morning. So today's going to be my first time doing tissue culture without my supervisor watching over my shoulder. He has a meeting, so I'm excited to see how I go on my own. I think it'll be fine, but it's still just in my head, you know? I'm basically just reminding myself that, as with all things, the key is to just go through it slowly. Absolutely everything I need to do today on my own is in my lab book. Alrighty, we'll see how it goes. Good evening everybody. So today I got to do my transfections as I said. So we transfected into chemically competent cells. Basically bacterial cells that are just hanging out and not necessarily just looking to take up any old DNA that's hanging around. <laughs> that would not be good for their survival. So we have a few different ways of making them what we call competent, which is able to take in the DNA. So these cells were chemically competent, meaning we used chemicals as opposed to Electricity is the main other way that I know of. So these chemically competent cells can be quite delicate. I don't know, I guess think about it as if you'd been given an acid bath so that you are more receptive to things floating around in the environment. And so you want to be delicate with your pipettes when you're handling them and that sort of thing. But we got the DNA in by the looks. So basically you get the chemically competent cells, you add in the DNA that I ligated overnight last night, and you incubate them for 30 minutes on ice and then an hour shaking. So I had two time points in that, however long it's been, where I just had to sit around doing nothing. So the other thing I had to do today was refresh my media in the transfections that I did yesterday. I had to use the aspirator with the glass tip, about one mil of media out of each well, and then just replace it. So pretty routine, but I got to do it all by myself because my supervisor had a meeting. And as far as I can tell, I didn't stuff it up. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. I can't imagine how many 
hundreds, thousands more times I'm gonna do that before my PhD is over. But this was the first time I did it all by myself and for the moment I still find that exciting. Tomorrow I might actually be generating some data, if not tomorrow then Monday, which I am thrilled about because I would love to show you guys some pretty pictures of my cells. But I guess I'll leave that discussion for tomorrow morning. So yeah. Good morning everybody. I am on my way in today. So I had a thought yesterday. I think I won't actually be able to get data today. The analysis I want to do is facts and then just visually I want to look at my cells and take photos for the fluorescence and then also sequence them just so that I get used to what I'm going to be doing throughout the rest of the PhD. So doing them all for this would be a good way for my supervisor to show me how to do all of them so that I can do them later when I need to. But I just don't think I've got enough cells for facts. Probably for imaging and probably for sequencing. Um, but I've never done facts before. And I have this impression floating around that I need lots of cells for it. So I'm not actually sure that I'm going to be able to do facts today. If not though, I am definitely going to be splitting them today to try and grow more up. So Monday. We'll see. Good morning again, everybody. So I was only in there for about an hour. All I really had to do was split down my cells. So splitting is what we do when they start to fill up the space they've been given. So basically you take the cells that are happily living in one well, you take all of them and you redistribute them between two wells uh, or, or maybe more. It just depends how harshly you want to split them. The more dilute they are, the harsher you have split them or some cell lines require very gentle splitting conditions. My cells are very slow growing, but they don't mind about harsh conditions. They're just slow. So that actually works really well for the weekends because as long as I split them, on a Friday morning, they'll be very happy over the weekend growing in their new well. So unfortunately though, my transformation from yesterday didn't work. It's hard to say what happened along the way. It seems that the digestion worked because nothing came up on the control plate, but also nothing came up on the on the plate that should have come up. So my guess is it was a ligation issue, um, but who knows. So it's a disappointing way to end the week, but at the same time, I know exactly what I'm gonna be doing next week. Exactly what I did this week. I mean, not the whole week, just this one experiment. Just be repeated, so like I said a few days ago, cloning's a three-day procedure. Today is day three, it has failed. Start again at day one, I'm pretty sure. Even though I do trust my digestion, it's just better to start again. So I hope you've enjoyed this week in the life of a scientist. Every week looks totally different. There is no such thing as a nine to five in science. <laughs> and that's exactly what I wanted to capture with these videos. I am hoping to show that science is a varied and interesting profession. PhD certainly walks this line between being a student and being a professional in your field, which is very strange to say. Also, I'd like to point out that it feels very self-aggrandizing to say I did this when I'm still receiving a lot of help from my lab supervisor. But then to a point, we start to get into discussions of imposter syndrome. So anyway, this is getting a bit rambling, but just to say that I want to put these up every week. So please subscribe if you're interested in this sort of content or let me know what I can improve if you're interested in seeing something slightly different. At the moment, I'm aiming to post twice a week one of these videos and then also one technique video. Video. So anyway, that's my week in the life of a scientist. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Please like it if you did. Leave me a comment if there's anything I can do to improve and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this content. Thanks guys. See you next week.